Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. In today's video, I'm going to be attempting my first full tang knife with bolsters. So this is the first time I've ever tried this. I got a lot of my inspiration from Dave at Horse Right Clothing. Make sure you go check out his Instagram page uh, for some awesome pictures. The guy's an excellent photographer as well. And he also has some threads on blade forms uh, describing his bolster process, which I'm sure I messed up here and there. Uh, if you have any suggestions on how I can improve this process of installing bolsters on a full tang knife, please make sure to put those in the comment section below. I am definitely not a pro with this assembly method, and I'm sure I messed up here and there, or uh, I could do th some things uh, a little bit more efficiently. Also, when it comes to grinding the handle on a bolster knife, I, I found some great difficulties in this process, so if you have any tips and tricks on how to grind handles with bolsters, uh, also put those in the comment section below. Uh, lastly, I wanted to mention that the surface grinding attachment video was an awesome success. I want to thank you guys for that. Uh, I'll have some videos down the road of my results with that system and how well it's doing for me. But spoiler alert, it's uh, working out pretty good. So with that, I'll go on to my normal narration for this video and I hope you guys enjoy it. So we get this blade profiled and drilled and then we're going to move on to our heat treat before grinding our bevels. Uh, I have a whole video on heat treating, but I did lose the heat treating footage for this knife specifically. I went ahead and quenched it in Parks 50, and I did two tempering cycles at 213 degrees Celsius for this knife. So you can see that I am pulling out the knife here and cooling it to room temperature before doing the second tempering cycle. After we get the blade heat treated, we move on over to the surface grinding attachment and we go ahead and start trying to get a nice smooth finish on this knife. After I get one side done, I put some tape on it so as not to scratch this finish and then work on the other side. I start off with a 120 grit belt and then I moved up to an A45 Trizac, which is around the 360 grit finish. The turns on this table are very minute uh, as I'm moving towards the wheel. So that turn right there is only about one and a half to two thousandths of an inch. After we get this blade nice and smooth, uh, we'll head on over to our next step, which is going to be grinding out the bevels. You can see it makes a really nice uh, 360 grit finish there. First thing we do is we mark our scribe line in the center of where the edge will be or in the center of the blade and then we grind to that line. I used to mark out my bevel lines but I've kind of stopped doing that and I look for those as I go along since I'm doing a full flat grind. So in this case I start off with a 60 grit VSM ceramic belt. Uh, I used an old one at first to knock down the edge uh, or that corner and then I moved on to a newer belt to work the bevel up towards the spine. So you can see I'm working on the second side here. Uh, I'm going to give you a cutaway in a second of what the 60 grit finish looks like on the knife. After the 60 grit finish we move on to the 120 grit J-Flex belt. Uh, at this point I'll start trying to radius my plunge lines and get them pretty close to lined up. This is what the 120 grit belt looks like on one side and the 60 on the other. Lastly, I'll head on over to a 220 grit J-Flex and these are the results from that. After grinding, I'll head on over to my uh, etching machine, my DIY etching machine here uh, based off of Chris Crawford's plans. We'll put my stencil on there, which comes from uh, TUC Industries, and hit it about 12 times on DC power, after which I will clean it up with a Scotch-Brite belt. Then I'll clean the blade off, and uh, we'll get to acid etching. I've been noticing in some of my etches there are some kind of specks that don't seem to get etched, and I think it could be uh, my cleaning process, so I need to... I need to up my game uh, when it comes to cleaning these guys off, making sure that they're completely dry before putting them in the acid so that I can get the nice even etch. We take some steel wool and wipe the blade off, baking soda to neutralize the acid, 
and then put it in our uh, rock tumbling jig here for about 15 minutes. If you're curious on how to make one of these rock tumbling jigs, uh, go ahead and check out some of the other videos on my channel. Really simple build, but uh, I use this thing all the time now. So spray this guy down, and this is the finish that we were able to achieve. You can see some of those specs towards the plunge line there, uh, so I'm still trying to figure out what those are. Uh, but we're going to move on to the bolsters here. So I cut out two pieces of brass, and then I flattened uh, one side of each of them on our granite plate there. And then scribe lined the center of one so that I can line it up to the center of these two holes in my full tang knife here. And then I clamp the whole assembly together. Now that the assembly is clamped, I'm going to go over to the drill press and drill one one-eighth hole uh, through the tang and the two pieces of brass using the tang as a drill guide. Put a drill bit in that original hole and then go ahead and drill the second hole as well. So this is how that came out. I went ahead and marked the left and right and also the front just so I don't get anything mixed up. And then back over to my surface plate to clean up the front of the scales. I ended up hitting them with a 400 grit cork belt here. This would have been a good application for a buffer. Using a tapered punch, I went ahead and tapered the outside of the holes so as to have some space for my peening. So I went ahead and just punched uh, kind of gently just enough to deform the brass out a little bit at the entrance. And then on the back ends, I chamfered the hole so that uh, while I'm peening, if the pin expands at all, it will have some space to go. I then took some mosaic pins and brought them down just enough so that they slide into these holes uh, effortlessly. Then using some JB weld, uh, we went ahead and coated the inside of the bolsters and the tang of the knife. Then we drove our pins through gently and then uh, tapped this whole thing together. Now I did make my pins a little too long as you'll see here so I went over to the belt sander and took down the, the, uh, the length of the pins on each side to make the peening process easier. So we went ahead and got it uh, pushed together. You can see my pins are a little too long here. Took it over to the belt sander knocked them down so that they're just proud of the bolsters and then came back to my mini anvil here and uh, started peening over those pins. For good measure I went ahead and put a light clamp on these bolsters as well. But before that you can see me there cleaning off the excess JB weld uh, with WD-40. Oh yeah and I also hit the whole thing with the belt sander just to see how I did and they look good. All right, so I went on to some uh, liner material. For, uh, this is G10. Got this nice and flat. This is gonna be going in between my brass bolster and ironwood. And then I went ahead and got my ironwood flat. You can tell when something's really flat when you put it on the plate and it kind of does that little skate at the end there. Uh, also, it will stick to another piece that's been flattened. So these two pieces are super flat, which I like went ahead and cleaned up the front of them where they'll be contacting the spacer. So I'm mixing up a little uh, G-Flex here. We're gonna put on one side uh, alone and then use the tang as a drill guide to drill that scale after the epoxy has dried. So this is kind of a long uh, way to do it because I have to wait for the epoxy to dry uh, multiple times. Uh, but I think it gets me pretty straight holes through the assembly, so it, it worked out, but I'm sure there's a better way. So we just get this thing glued in, and then using some light clamps, uh, clamp it down. After it's dried up, we're able to head on over to the uh, drill press and use our tang as a drill guide for those holes. So we get those two number 13 holes drilled out, because we are going to be using Corby's. And I actually go ahead and drill out some of the center holes as well 
uh, just so these can be kind of epoxy holes the next the next round of epoxy I do. I then clean that uh, clean up that side of the tang with some sandpaper, put some more G, uh, G flex on it, and do the same thing on this side. Throw the spacer down, put the ironwood on, and clamp it up. This would be a good case to use some faster setting epoxy. Uh, maybe uh, maybe the one hour stuff from combat. I ended up getting some of that, uh, but I just didn't get it soon enough. So I'll go ahead and clip off the long pieces of G10 here. Uh, I wanted to get the sides of the knife flat before doing uh, some drilling and cutting. So I'll go over to the belt sander, get it kind of flat there, and use the whole uh, the original holes on the other side of the scales as a drill guide. And then we're going to countersink our holes here. On one of these, I did not go deep enough, and that, I ran into a problem during the glue up later on. Uh, but I ended up having to go back to the counterbore during the glue up, which is never a fun thing to do. But I adjust my corbies down to about a quarter of an inch, and then I use some combat abrasive rogue epoxy here uh, to put in my corby fasteners. I'm going to be trying this stuff up down the road, and I want to compare it to the uh, G-Flex as far as performance goes, but I use it in this project because I wanted a fast, uh, fast cure time. So I fought with this until I went back to my drill press, uh, deep in that counterbore, and then everything worked out just fine, but I definitely fiddled with it for a couple minutes there. All right, then we're just going to get the sides flat and cut off the excess on the bandsaw. Uh, I had a a template of this knife so I was able to draw that template uh, onto the outside here to give me a rough estimate of, of where to cut with this bandsaw. Then I took down the profile of the handle to the tang and then after I got everything nice and squared up I started uh, radiusing the handle like this. So I did that to both sides so that I have a nice uh, radius on both sides of the handle. And this is how that uh, this is how that turned out. Now this is how that turned out. So the next step is to knock down these edges with a one-inch scalloped belt, J Flex belt. The major challenge here is, since the brass is harder, not taking off too much wood and having a bump where they come together. And due to massive public outcry, we will have some epic hand sanding coming up. So while I was hand sanding, I noticed there was a little inclusion in the ironwood here. So I went ahead and cleaned it with uh, alcohol and then hit it with some super glue there to fill that in. And then to get this finish smooth, uh, or at least all uniform, I went over to the surface conditioning belt and tried to get everything moving in the same direction. I think this would have been a good case if I had a buffer, uh, but go ahead and give me some suggestions in the comment section below. Uh, I'm not super happy with the complete finish of the brass there, but it does look decent and I think it comes out to around a 400 or 600 grit finish. Uh, at least all the lines are going in the same direction and that's kind of what I was shooting for with that surface conditioning belt. Then we went ahead to the, uh, the stone sharpener here from Wynn, the water stone. Cleaned the blade off and it is sharp. So yeah, this is how my first bolstered full tang knife turned out. Uh, all in all, I'm happy with it. It took me some time uh, comparatively to what I normally do, but that's uh, part of the learning process here. Um, you know, I think there would probably be a more efficient way to finish this brass bolster uh, so that it's nice and shiny or shinier than it is here. You know, in this case, it's almost a brushed finish. And I think that a buffer would probably do a good job of getting uh, in all the nooks and crannies there. Especially in the finger choil area, uh, it was kind of hard to get in there. But I hope you guys liked this video. 
Uh, if you did, think about subscribing to the channel. I'd really appreciate it. And here are some other videos that you may like uh, to watch next. And as always, I'll catch you all on the flip side.